Halo, iya Pak. Iya Pak, uh, saya pikir kita sudah bisa mulai nih Pak Iman. Baik Pak. Saya admin semuanya ya Pak. Uh, Pak, tapi tolong sisakan sedikit ya untuk Pak Dion. Oh, yeah. baik Pak. So a bit, just a bit waiting while the participants are being admitted.
Hello everyone. Uh, in a just few seconds, we will start the seminar. So why waiting? As well, for the participants to be admitted. Good morning. So may I have your attention, please, all participants, because we will start the seminar now as the participants being admitted. OK. Uh, first, first of all, my name is Iman Nurmansha. Uh, currently, I work as senior officer of Bureau of Cooperation and International Relations at Universitas Pembangunan Jaya. Today's seminars, the topic would be emerging from crisis, uh, the challenges and survivals of businesses from academic perspective. So a bit background on that is the seminar was initiated by the Faculty of Business and Humanities of Universitas Pembangunan Jaya, Indonesia, in collaborations with Assumption University, Bangkok, Thailand, as well as University Technology Mara, Perak Branch, Malaysia. There will be three speakers, distinguished speakers in this seminar, and also two moderators from those respective institutions. Well, without taking much time, uh, I will start with the opening. So I would like to invite Mr. Eddie Yusuf, PhD. He is our Vice Rector for Operational Affairs and Partnerships. He is also a senior lecturer in our Department of Civil Engineering, Universitas Pembangunan Jaya. Mr. Eddie, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Masiman. So I would like to welcome uh, participants as well as uh, the speakers. Uh, so we have Dr. Bing Zhu from Assumption University, Thailand, uh, Dr. Dion Dewa Barata, uh, our lecturer from Jepang uh, Jaya, and Ibu uh, Kalija Ramli from UITM, our esteemed partner as well. Uh, welcome to this uh, seminar. I think it's very interesting topic, uh, crisis. Uh, you can think crisis as um, a double-edged sword. Uh, you can see it as opportunity or, uh, or as, as a threat as well. Uh, I remember reading, say, uh, Manhattan Project 
back in the 40s uh, in the World War II, came out of this fear that the uh, uh, German Nazi would create an atomic bomb. So they, they, they created this, this Manhattan Project that you know, flourish as, uh, you know, very strong uh, corporations that we know of, uh, as well as um, NASA was born out of a fear of space race uh, back in the, uh, I think, 50s or so, uh, where this uh, Soviet Union um, uh, launched this unmanned um, uh, space shuttle to the moon. So they did NASA as we know now. Uh, looking back also IBM, uh, how they thrive, to this Great Depression in the in the 30s, I think um, uh, how they uh, Thomas Watson really uh, took the risk to uh, grab this opportunity uh, in the Great Depression time. Instead of slowing down in, in the factory production, he I think he pulled, he boosted uh, the this production of this uh, crypto parts. The, uh, IBM becomes this this huge you know gigantic um, uh, IT company as we know now. Uh, so I think crisis really can create um, a huge op opportunity when, when we can see it. So uh, I think this, this uh, seminar would bring us um, a new understanding, uh, new openings of uh, how to, to innovate uh, during this time of crisis. Uh, so I hope everyone uh, can have a fruitful uh, time listening to the, to the keynote speakers, uh, and as well as uh, uh, getting some important uh, take home points. Thank you. I'll give the floor back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for your kind openings and vid remarks regarding space and all. Uh, so I think we shall proceed into the presentation sessions. There will be three speakers, as I mentioned earlier. So each speaker will be given time of maximum 15 minutes uh, to present their topics, their interesting, interesting topics in this case. So the first speaker would be Dr. Bingzu from the Department of Marketing, MSME Business School, Assumption University, Thailand. So I might read at least a bit short profile of her. She is currently a full-time lecturer at that respective department, Assumption University in Bangkok, Thailand. Received her PhD degree in business administration and economics. researcher and associate editor for ABAC journal. It's an international Scopus journal. Well, without taking further times, uh, Dr. Bingzu, the floor is yours. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Um. So please allow me to okay turn off the video because so I, the connection perhaps will be better. Okay, so okay. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, morning everyone. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's my great pleasure to take this opportunity to discuss with all of you here regarding okay how to overcome the pandemic crisis during this critical moment from academic perspective. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Handy Tanadi, for the kind invitation. Okay. Uh, let me share my, my, my PowerPoint. Second. Uh, Um, yeah, by now, okay, yeah, COVID-19 outbreak, okay, has an effect to 100 countries and regions around the world. And this pandemic has changed the way we live, we communicate, we work, and we socialize. In Thailand, okay, we have been, you know, stay home for three months uh, to now. So I do believe that this kind of uh, pandemic 
also reshape our behavior. And personally speaking, I think this kind of influence is somehow complicated because it has both static and dynamic influence involving economy, society, humanity, and many other aspects. Um, obviously, a fighting against anime has given us an excellent opportunity for comprehensive inspection and rational understanding. We have tried to learn to understand the shortcomings, to find the problem and solutions. Okay, for example, during this uh, pandemic crisis, we switched from okay, teaching in the classroom to teaching online. This is the solution, okay. Every problem, okay, has a solution. So try to find the problem and find the solution. So today I will show you um, the scenario of Thailand through my short presentation. Uh, I will briefly talk about uh, some key industry that have been seriously affected and the corresponding measures and stimulus package and I do believe that um, in many countries, the government or the uh, institution also issued a similar practice. So let's take a look at some general economy data. Uh, for Thailand, uh, SME is a real backbone of Thai economy. And is including okay manufacturing service, wholesalers and retail, providing seventy eight percent of employment, and SME contributed forty two percent of the GDP in two thousand nineteen. That is a very good figure. For the service sector, okay, Thai economy rely on the service sector. And the service sector account for 56.3 of the GDP. And when we talk about okay, service, we cannot avoid tourism. Okay, we cannot avoid the tourism. Uh, in 2019, for example, Thailand hosts uh, almost 40 million visitors and there are three Cities, Bangkok, Phuket, and Pattaya, on the list of top 20 global destinations. And in terms of manufacturing, and during the last 20 years, Thailand has manufactured 40% of the world's hard disk drives. And continuously, Thailand okay, is the second largest exporter of air conditioner and washing machine. Around 70% of the output are export or export. And Thailand has positioned as one of the kind of car manufacturing hubs in the world. And this sector contributes nearly 12% of the Thai economy growth and around 500,000 people working in this industry. And almost all the leading car brands from Japan, US, and Europe have their major manufacturing facility in Thailand. And next, we will see some other data showing how Thailand has been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, from economy perspective here, Thailand's GDP, uh, GDP growth projection revised uh, downwards to negative 0.3%. Private consumption, private investment, public consumption, export import, all decrease except public investment. The Bank of Thailand has reduced uh, the interest rate to 0.75%. The purpose was to reduce the interest burden 
alleviate liquidity and boost the domestic consumption. In terms of the tourism, COVID-19 has a serious effect on Thai tourism industry. We can imagine, okay, visa restriction, okay, by suspension, border closure, and social distancing and other measures made Thai tourism industry to be, let's say, almost completely suspended. Many people in this industry become jobless. Thailand standing to lose okay, approximately 47 billion US dollar this year. And for the manufacturing, COVID-19 has affected the supply chain uh, operation in Thailand. In fact, the manufacturer uh, manufacturing activity in Thailand highly rely on the import of intermediate goods from China, Japan, and South Korea. These three countries has been hit by the COVID-19 uh, during this time. So in Thailand, the export production is reduced for both intermediate goods and final goods. So consequently, the export activity is influenced. While other sectors such as uh, transportation, accommodation, recreation have been affected negatively. Insurance, delivery service, and e-commerce significantly developed. During the lockdown period, Thai people use e-commerce, uh, order the food online, and they tend to spend more on health insurance. So these three sectors increase a lot. From a social perspective, uh, here I would like to just address one or two issues. Okay. The first one is that okay, the COVID-19 has worsened the equality in inequality in Thai society. And everyone in Thailand has been affected. But the hardest hit are thousands of duty drivers here. And they highly rely on the tourism. And COVID-19 extremely affect the bottom 50% of Thailand's work workforce. Why? Because this group of people, they are already vulnerable enough because the lack of regular income and product assets. And many people become jobless. In terms of unemployment rate, it increased. Here I give you the why you Okay, it's estimated, okay, the rate of unemployment rate in Thailand will reach three to five million people. It's a new record, okay. For example, for the in tourism industry, January to March, more than 30,000 people become jobless. In Bangkok region, the unemployment rate reached 9.6% in May. We don't like this kind of figure. For the graduate, COVID-19 crisis also affected the graduate. Currently, okay, we have a 500,000 graduate job. And this year, we will have another 300,000 graduate. So we can imagine if the situation keep going on like this, so perhaps we have a, around 1 million graduates without job. That's it. That may cause serious social problem in the near future. From a marketing perspective, 
uh, Thai consumer behavior is changing because the uh, pandemic. Significantly, uh, including myself, uh, we start to aware of the importance of saving. Uh, one of my friends, okay, used to use credit card, okay, one credit card, two credit card. But when the crisis comes, she suddenly found that she has no enough saving at the bank, uh, in the bank. So what we learned from the crisis is that we need to save more. Okay. Apart from that, people prefer to spend equipment, insurance, and spend less on eating out. Prefer to cook at home more, and these also in uh, these also cause a in the increase of sales of kitchen supplies. For the retail outlet and restaurant, COVID-19 could take 900 million to 1.5 billion baht away from their income. And many people have reduced the frequency of traveling. Including I myself, we try to avoid going out, uh, go to the retail store by buying the large quantity at a time and spending less time to pick up the product. And if possible, Thai people will buy the ready-made food, put at home or order instead of going to the restaurant. That's why, if we remember, I mentioned in the previous line, okay, the delivery service increased. Mm -hmm. People order a lot of things online, including food and product. And in order to support economy and recover the economy, Thai government has issued the relevant measures and stimulus. Take a look at the package for SME. Government. Prove a broad range of financial and physical relief measures to help the SME. Uh, tourism is a uh, provided for vulnerable groups. For example, okay, the five thousand baht cash support have been provided for three months those people including levels temporary worker and who haven't registered under social security system and for those individuals under social security system we will receive 50 percent of the previous salary if the employer temporary part employment a series of seminars are organized to enhance the career uh, skill and competence. So it's a free, it's also free. So other similar measures are also available. For example, monetary policy uh, measures on credit card or stabilization of bond market and so on. To make the economy recover, uh, Thai government come up with a new normal initiative. This is the mechanism that enables Thailand slowly making the first step towards a reopening the business and restarting the economy. The first new normal is to create a greater direct involvement of all the sector in the government's planning to build a greater Thailand. The second new normal is to increase the efficiency of the administration. For example, okay, the government will make it easier for stakeholders to give the feedback. They are they willing to listen. The third new normal 
is to come up with a proactive practice. And recently we talked about the travel bubbles. Uh, we open, we sl slowly open the country for those, uh, for the foreign country who are already control the spread of a coronavirus uh, one by one. We slowly open our country. We call it travel bubbles. Uh, here, I, uh, I give you uh, two examples. Um, for the retail industry, what a new normal would be. Uh, the retail landlord and tenants try to work together to create what we call positive shopping experience for those health consci conscious and convenient centric consumer. For me, I, I agree with this uh, practice. Here we have a function easy economy. So the SMB uh, try to provide the convenience for consumer. So without going out, uh, without uh, contribute a lot of effort, so we still can enjoy our life. And in return, okay, we also uh, alleviate the burden of the government. Uh, in terms of the tourism, and uh, the tourism uh, driven is driven under the supervision of the public health. And this new normal adjusts, uh, okay, for example, booking in advance, uh, promote the eco tourism, uh, addressing the safety uh, compass. They, finally, they also promote the technology like a digital uh, utilization. Uh, here I show you some picture, Bangkok in new normal. Uh, so no matter where we go, we have to, okay, wear the mask and keep the social distancing, uh, something like this. Wear the mask and measure the temperature. And personally, uh, I do believe that innovation is a, the main driven force to overcome the pandemic crisis. Innovation, including social innovation, technological innovation can help us to solve the problem. For example, like a social innovation, like a new normal. Uh, uh, technological innovation, for example, like a vaccine. So anyway, we have to work together to make your life better. Thank you very much. This is my presentation for today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ringzi. Uh, I suppose uh, it is very enlightening for us, all the participants, to hear such kind of presentations. It is very comprehensive in a way that it explains a lot regarding the impacts of current pandemic of COVID-19. But I shall, I shall touch a few highlights of it. Uh, let me reiterate regarding a, a lot of perspective, such as an economic perspective, less productivity, societal perspective, jobless and increasing inequality as well. In terms of marketing perspective, decreasing marketing activities, people try to change the traditional way into online system marketing, and also uh, the last but not so least uh, point regarding the measures and policies by the government, such as health, employment, monetary, and customs, as well as tourism policies to manually survive uh, the so-called the, so the new normal. And last but not least, also uh, innovations. That is one of the most important keywords uh, in terms of the explanations from Dr. Bingzu. Well, uh, without further ado, let's move to another speaker. Assalamualaikum. Ms. Kaliza Ramli. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me read a short profile of her first. Okay. Okay. Uh, he, she holds the positions of Coordinator Department of Business Management of UIT Ampera Branch, Malaysia. She's been an academician for almost 14 years and still going received MBA degree from UITM 
and was served as head of entrepreneurship unit in 2008 till 2010. Apart from those, she involves in social commerce, also often giving talks in various entrepreneurship programs. The floor is yours, Madam Kaliza. Okay. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, Hello. moderators, panelists, and audience for this session. Hopefully, everybody is doing wonderfully. We are dissecting a pressing issue emerging from crisis, challenges, and survivals of businesses from an academic perspective. Let me begin by sharing the situation in Malaysia in general. So, we begin by revisiting and learning from the past. As writer and philosopher George Santayana said, those who cannot remember the past or history are condemned to repeat it. As crises, challenges, and survivals are parts of human evolutions, it's our judgment, resilience, and creativity that will endure our paradigm shifts either to become better or remain stagnant forever. As we focus and discuss our topic today, what we are experiencing now in terms of economic recession is not new. In Malaysia, for example, we had recession in 1988, Southeast Asian region in 1997, worst financial crisis in 100 years in 90, started in 1997. In world context, there was a Great Depression in 1930, oil crisis in 1973, and economic depression during the President Obama era in 2008. However, what we are experiencing today are worse than any of us have ever seen. It's all started as health crisis, which quickly evolved into a global economic crisis at a speed and magnitude we have not seen in our lifetime. The ripple effects are still unfolding on a global scale, and it is unlikely that the true impact of this pandemic can be measured until the situation is stabilized. As we come out of this challenging and uncertain time, how will we recover as we go back to business as usual, knowing that we will be calling for changes at the individual, organizational, and government levels? We see four stages that outline the path towards recovery. First, reaction. The focus is on limiting damages to lives, livelihoods, as we weather the unprecedented storm. Immediately after the movement control order was announced, many lost their main source of income, especially those who are doing their own business. Despite the challenges, some strive to persevere, especially essential businesses. The second stage, resilience. Consumer demand begins to return but is constrained by low wages, investment losses, and recession fears. Malaysian Institute of Economic Research, MIER, estimated COVID-19 caused 2.4 million to be unemployed. Malaysian government has announced various economic stimulus packages and financial aid to reduce the economic impact of this pandemic. Third, the recovery stage. This will vary based on the ability to limit damage from the reaction stage, length and severity of recession, post-COVID-19 industry demand and willingness to adapt. The reality is that no one will stay the same as before or post-COVID-19. No individual, organization or country can escape this inevitable change. According to Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives Minister in Malaysia, about 907,000 SMEs and micro entrepreneurs in this country would be, would be facing different business scenario once the movement control order ended. And lastly, the new reality. Learn behaviors born out of the crisis will become central to the new normal that requires readjustment. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed existing weak links across industry in managing our economy, which has a strong fundamental in bracing the sudden unseen enemies. The outbreak has reshaped, forced us to rethink, reform, rebuild, and restructure our approaches and strategies. 
it has continuously shifting to the recovery mode and there comes the need to accommodate to the new reality and new normal, not only to protect our health, but once again to jumpstart and revive the economy to be fully revitalized. The allocation of almost Ringgit Malaysia 373 million is in place to ensure sustainability and recovery of entrepreneurs and businesses affected by the pandemic. Bank Negara Malaysia had announced an expansion to Special Relief Fund, SRF, from 2 billion ringgit to 5 billion to help SMEs affected due to COVID-19. Malaysian government also issued second stimulus package valued at 250 billion ringgit focus on enhancing the existing financing facilities issued in the first stimulus package. It's also aimed to support businesses, especially for small and medium-sized enterprise SMEs and provide fiscal injections to strengthen the national economy. Even so, entrepreneurs and industry players must act boldly, wisely and view every angle holistically with a suggested formula. This formula is not merely some steps to follow, but essential 10 elements that need to be turned into drastic action. First, focus on critical problem, identifying the processes and systems that must be stabilized to support the businesses. For many small businesses, having a trusted advisor that they can turn to for help and guidance through this crisis is incredibly important. Second, put people first. This pandemic is mostly about human crisis. The employees, health issues, well-being, flexible working hours, work from home arrangements, uh, and new human resource policy may be needed in order to handle this situation. Third, communication. Maximize the human channel. Through social media like Facebook, IG, video call, webinar, YouTube, etc., to enhance our network and values as people look to business with a strong leadership in uncertain times. Fourth, enable remote work. This includes addressing alternative work areas, new ways of working, buying new equipment and refreshing access to right policies. Fifth, invest in self-service and automation. This is especially true for online services. All these digitally powered activities are now front and center with some declaring it as the new norm. Sixth, optimize cloud infrastructure. As most of the workforce is working remotely there is a need to enhance our cloud to cope with the increase in demand and to handle extra load. Seven, review security, risk and governance. This is crucial as cyber criminals are using COVID-19 outbreak to their advantage with fake websites and all other false information. Eight, continue transformation work. During crisis, we must revert from the traditional working models, invest in high value areas such as cloud automation to help businesses survive and thrive in short and long term. Ninth, reframe funding. Due to the severity of and the economic impact caused by COVID-19, cost reductions, removal of unused and unnecessary expenses and other areas are very likely in order to maintain a continuous value delivery. Talking about funding and expenses, we don't deny that the biggest challenge for SMEs is cash flows. And some malicious SMEs expected that there will be no cash inflow for at least three months due to MCO. Last but not least, adjust the IT operating model. Every change that had been done during this COVID-19 pandemic will impact our IT operating model across multiple dimensions, process, technology, people, service delivery, data, etc. Especially 
uh, technologies are vital to help business mitigate the damage and could even help them to revive, to rebound and evolve post credit. This formula, all these 10 formulas are elements and which not intended to be an exhaustive checklist, but rather acting as a tool to help identifying prioritize actions that call for an immediate attention. While the future is hard to predict right now, we have demonstrated a tremendous ability to ride out storms before and emerge stronger. It will take a united effort because together we are twice as stronger. With that, thank you. I return the floor to Thank Bondra. you. Pak Iman. Thank you, Madam Khalija Ramli. What an interesting, I think, explanations regarding uh, how to recover back in business in terms of uh, facing this pandemic. Well, uh, Madam Ramli also touched upon the topics of recovery stages, such as limiting damages and also the importance of resilience to accommodate demands from the public, especially the private sector, <laughs> and how to face the new reality as it is. Readjustment is also the key word for it. And how the Malaysian government deal with it in terms of policy that they are using, like people first, and then optimizing communications as well as the digital world. Mm -hmm. yeah. See my flow into uh, to my, my colleague, my esteemed colleague from the ITM, Madam Nurhazwani Zulkipli, are you there? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Iman. So, hi everyone, my Thank name you. is uh, Ms. Hazwani Zulkipli from the ITM Para Branch Malaysia, uh, the same university with Ms. Khadija. Uh, I am your moderator from this point onward until the end of the session. So the next speaker is Dr. Dion Lewa Barata from Universitas Pembangunan Jaya UPJ Indonesia. So uh, I'll give you a bit of his background. Dr. Dion has more than 10 years experience as an academician and a practitioner in marketing. He obtained his doctoral degree from Universitas Indonesia in 2011. Dr. Dion uh, was also appointed as the head of the Bureau of Planning, Development and Innovation, UPJ. He actively involved in the entrepreneurship development at the national level to the womenpreneur community as a supporting team and member of the supervisory, supervisory board since 2011. At present, he led the university business incubator, namely Jaya Launchpad. So, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Dion. Okay, wait, uh, let me check with the... Can you already see the screen? Beyond 2020? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. This is the right screen, right? Beyond 2020? Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity for being part in this wonderful event, especially to my colleague at Management Study Program, Faculty of Humanitarian Business, Universitas Mamunan Jaya, Indonesia. Uh, on this presentation, I'm going to talk about what lies beyond 2020 for small medium enterprise, especially in Southeast Asia, and how higher education institution can give contribution to help them emerging from this challenging situation. Okay, okay, this is the background. Okay, as already mentioned by previous speaker, yes, now we are on the challenging moment. Lockdown almost everywhere in the world during this COVID-19 situation and its impact to our GDP that roughly dropped across Asian member state. Also, our stock market index is dropping. You can you can see this uh, the the stock market index is dropping all over the all over the nation. And now we are also heard that number of late off already happened. Unemployment rate, 
is increasing and lots of company, especially SME, already closing down its business. This is the reality that we are now dealing with. And as an academic, the most important question to be asked is, what can we do to help our SME? Let me show. Okay, Gre greetings from Watoni Foundation. Uh, Watoni Foundation uh, is a not non not for profit organization with a mission to accelerate economic development by driving job creation through entrepreneur innovation and skill development. Now we already operated in Asia. Africa and Latin and, La, and Latin America. We call, we call it LATAM. My name is John Deo Barata, as already mentioned by the moderator from Indonesia, and I'm a senior program manager for What One Foundation in Southeast Asia region. For Southeast Asia region, as an entrepreneur, I also a co-founder now uh, in a, in an application in a startup company called Doclink, a healthcare solution apps under Telkom Indonesia Business Incubator Unit, Indigo. And I also a faculty staff at Management Study Program Universitas Mangunan Jaya. So this is uh, this is my brief profile. Okay. Now we talk about uh, what happened in Southeast Asia today. And this is what happened in Southeast Asia today. Every government already try their best to stimulate business, which dramatically slowing down for a uh, past three or four months, and the lockdown slow but sure gradually been pulled off to make sure all the will, the economic will, the business will roll up again, but with a very high con uh, conscious. For the past three months, we already experiencing uh, lots of changing, especially changing in our spending habit. Uh, now, most of us shop online for something that usually find offline. Number of online spending also grow even even uh, at Southeast Asia. Here uh, you can see my slide. We are bigger than USA, yeah. In terms of number of shopping and also for spending, so uh, this is a very very quite quite what uh, quite performance from our from our region Southeast Asia uh, that something is something is changing in our in our life actually. Okay, this is what, uh, so this is the six things that now we need to look at. Yeah. Especially if you are small, medium enterprise, or if we want to help small, medium enterprises. These are what we think a game changer, especially in Southeast Asia. As we know now, almost everything go online. Even essential product uh, like me, for myself, I usually uh, buy, by what? Oh, by fruits. Just go to market and buy fruits now. Uh, during this COVID situation, even for buying food, I can do it online. Apps adventure will become a new kind of leisure. What is the apps adventure means? At apps adventure means like means like that. Now, uh, before the COVID situation, we are only using the same apps. Actually, uh, the change changing for the apps is not. Is not that is not that high. The the churn of the the churn of the apps not is not that high. But during this COVID nineteen situation, we uh, we mostly mostly we like surfing what kind of apps that I want to install today. So the new app the new app will be the new leisure. And yes, virtual is here to stay, including this conference. I think. Now everything become virtual from work, learning, and everything. And since we are now already know that uh, the the benefit of this virtual world, I'm pretty sure that uh, the virtual will here to stay. People now become more careful when selecting a product. That's why reputation is the key, because in this COVID-19 situation, everyone try to reduce the risk. And brand reputation is the tool they use to reduce the risk. Healthy and social lifestyle will be the top of mind product to choose right now. 
suddenly everyone trying to be healthy and the business related to this industry will also grow and since the economic condition still uncertainty most people now be more careful with their money and product that they're going to buy they're going to buy a product with a reasonable or if i say economical price will be favorable right now so uh, this this six game changer will will be the opportunity for a small medium enterprise in southeast asia actually actually there's a there, there's a backup research uh, for for all of this uh, but uh, i can i cannot show you because uh, because of the time but we need to put ourselves on this six changing landscape especially in southeast asia uh, but before we tap into this opportunity we need new perspective we need new perspective okay the first perspective consumer of the future yeah. will the consumer behavior we have we have already seen through this crisis are they going to stay like this or are they going to change back means like if we now see that customer love to go online after the after the crisis are they going to stay online or are they going to change back to their old habit we need to we need to make sure uh, we need to resolve this problem by doing that we can help our sme to understand uh, their customer more better Re mm. Business for what? Uh, sorry, sorry. Same operation and supply chain. Do we need uh, after this COVID situation? Are we going to use the same operation and the same supply chain for our business, or we need to like remodeling our business model, or uh, we're going to expand our supply chain, or what? That's the thing uh, that academic need to point business for what the new perspective is business for what usually we think that we do business to get profit we do business to get uh, to get enough wealth now with this coffee situation we need to we need to rethink if we do business is for what is it for is it only for us or this is for the sustainability of our surrounding the sustainability of our environment i think uh, for the near future, we're going to uh, go with more holistic, holistic approach that our business need to be useful for our surroundings. New technology platform. How this new technology platform will change our way of business, especially for the small medium enterprise that not use to use the technology now they need to adapt this technology now, this is the opportunity for the higher education or the, for the academic to help them embrace this kind of technology not just embrace but uh, like teach them or be with them using that technology to expand their business and also the business model are we going to use the business model with this kind of this kind of situation, I think the business model need to be reshaped. The business model need to be need to be adapt with uh, with our current situation. We cannot we cannot be uh, again as a competitor, but need to be a collaborator. And also, we need to we need to pay attention with the with what happened in the world. I think uh, I I talk about I talk about the macroeconomics that that happen around the small medium enterprise uh, now we see that all government all the, all the people trying to give the stimul give the stimulant to the sme the regulation is simple is simplified that's the opportunity that's the opportunity that small medium enterprise can take okay 
sorry, sorry. Uh, why not? Okay. So how academic can help small medium enterprise? The answer, I think, uh, we can help them, but we need to go beyond teaching and embrace the new role and collaborate with the SME. Let me show you the generic model of higher education. There are two basic resources that higher education have usually. First, the program or the curricula, the, me the method, and so on. The second, the staff, all the professors, researchers, and so on. We combine this resource to support our student. So they will grow with lots of idea, insight, and knowledge. We need to make sure that they have enough knowledge and also skill necessary to fit with society and community. And also we need to make sure that all the process still comply with the regulation and fit with the accreditation. And, uh, and uh, this is important accreditation. I think for all, for all higher education institution, we're focused uh, usually we, fo we we focus on the accreditation, but in the re in the in this situation we need not to focus only for that. We need also focus on what we're going to help, what we're going to do to help other people surrounding in our university. After this, our student will go as worker as an or go as an entrepreneur. They hopefully bring value to their employer or to their own venture. Okay. This is the generic model of higher education. And then this has happened. Crisis everywhere and business slowing down. As academics, we can collaborate both with small medium enterprise or startups to find solution or strategy or just an insight. So they now have a better understanding about what's going on. And so they will able to make a better decision. I think this is the next step of the generic model of higher education. We need we need evolve ourselves. We need to evolve ourselves not just not just teaching or not just like doing doing research but need also to act deep dive with the problem that faced by SME we need to make sure that higher education plays a role as a hub for all the stakeholders scientific resource scientific resource necessary skill and work glass this is the thing the new role that higher education need to embrace as a resource center Higher education can be a hub for small medium enterprise and scientific resource to collaborate solving the real problem happen in industry. By doing this, both small medium enterprise and higher education will get a new insight and improve their strategy in the future. The key is to choose the problem that really need to solve. Most of the, most of the lecturer that I know, actually, uh, they do research after they finish research, which is, a, which is a good research, after they 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 finish the research, they just put the research in the library. I think with with this COVID nineteen situation, the, the, this is the right time for us to embrace what happened in the industry and collaborate with the SME and we solve the real problem. Uh, here is the example: what what Wani Foundation artificial intelligence collaborate with university to solve crop pest infestation. This is the real problem faced by the real farmer. Okay. 
higher education also need to play as a as a hub for small medium enterprise to connect with the various of communities for example if small medium enterprise want to test its product concept higher education or university can help to find can help finding the right community to make synergy by doing this partnership will also be established between SME and the community Okay, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Dion, uh, yep. I think we're almost out of time. Okay, okay, okay. So, can we proceed? Uh, okay, can you wrap up? What is the yeah, final yeah, okay. piece of advice you'd like to give to the audience? Okay. Let me, let me, okay, take away. Okay. This is the, la the last slide. Actually, uh, I, I, I think this is the takeaway. The challenge in every industry will still increase it. Mm -hmm. The problem faced by SME will here to stay. The behavior will dynamically changing. Southeast Asia has a huge business potential and opportunity for SME. This is our part. Higher Education Institute need to be part as a problem solver, not part of the problem, but as a problem solver. We need to push the role as resource center, community hub, upskilling center, and world class. Means that we help SME or we help startup to understand what happened in their industry more better. And the and the final, we can help creating jobs and changing life, and helping our small medium enterprise. I think that's the that's the takeaway. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Yan. Uh, so thank you for the enlightening information. So um, you have mentioned about how online spending goes higher, even higher than USA, and about new apps and how it become the new leisure and how healthy and social lifestyle has become something in trend. And also about, uh, especially about the higher education collaboration with the SME yeah. in solving their problems. So thank you very much, Dr. Dion. Uh, well, we understand that businesses in all countries must navigate the financial and operational challenges of COVID-19 while rapidly addressing the needs of their people, customers, and suppliers. So there is an old saying that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So yeah. now we are inviting the audience to post any question in the chat box. Uh, we have a few minutes, okay? Uh, the last sessions of the uh, today for the Q&A. So the first question from YouTube live uh, is okay by Muammar Karapi from UIN Surabaya. The question is, what is the potential business for millennial during the pandemic? The first question, uh, he has two questions apparently. So the second question, what innovations and strategies can we do in digital marketing during the pandemic? So can we call upon Dr. Bin to answer this question? Or, the, yeah. or any speakers, please. Okay, the, the, can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the question is, what is the, I'm sorry, uh, can, can you repeat the question? Please? Sure, sure. The, what the is the potential business oh, yeah. for millennial during the pandemic? Okay. The potential business, you can, you can make a business uh, around this six changing landscape. As I mentioned in my in in the in the profile, I I also a co-founder of Docling. Uh, you know the be the beauty of this the beauty of this uh, technology. Now we can we can like connect all these thing. Yeah, we can connect all these thing to make a business a real business that solve the problem. So I make a business that focus on the health and social lifestyle. And this is the this is the kind of industry that uh, my personally I think will going to improve in the future. So if you want to be uh, if you want to make a business, uh, please. If if you ask me if you ask me, uh, be a business sur surrounding this this six land uh, changing landscape. Okay? okay. Thank you very much for the answer. So next question: What innovations and strategies? Can we do in digital marketing during the pandemic? Any takers? 
what innovations and strategies can we do in digital marketing during the pandemic? And the question for, for who? Yeah, um, yeah, can we call uh, Dr. B? Yes, okay, hello. All right. Could you, yeah. uh, could you please, okay, uh, repeat your, your question? Repeat the okay. question again. Yeah, sure. The question is, what innovations and strategies can we do in digital marketing during the pandemic? Okay, um, during the pandemic, okay, for the, uh, based on my experience is that, okay, around me, including myself, we tend to use e-commerce more. And what we found, what I found is that, okay, why I use uh, the application uh, through my mobile phone? I found that, okay, a lot of um, advertising pop up. And I would say that this is the way that uh, of doing, you know, advertising during the pandemic crisis. And for example, um, for example, like uh, we have a grab food, uh, uh, the, the platform to order the food online. And during this time, the let's say the, the platform have offered a lot of uh, promotion. I think it's more than than we had before before the lockdown. So they provide more options. They also adjust the, the strategy that, okay, during this time, because the income uh, level decreased, so the delivery service tend to free, tend, tend to be more, free, uh, how can I say, become free. In the past, it's like uh, we have to pay the delivery fees based on the distance. But during this time, they reduce the price, uh, the, the, the fee to 10 baht or Sometimes, uh, most of the time, they offer free. Uh, it's like, I help you, you help me. So I think this is a time to create the positive advocacy online. Uh, if we have this kind of mindset, rather than focusing on the prof uh, profit maximization, because during this time, it's also easy to earn the profit. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you okay, very much, yeah. Dr. Bing. Uh, so next question comes from Dr. Anderson. His question is, um, what is the contribution of higher education institutions in your country to help the government to minimize the impact during this pandemic? So this question is specifically for higher education institutions and what government do to help uh, minimize the impact. Um, for me, okay, my university, okay, uh, we reduce the tuition. We reduce, I think, 20% of the tuition fee. And for the dormitory, okay, we reduce, uh, I think, around 30%. All right, okay. In Thailand, I think it's a common practice at the moment. For every school, uh, university, we do reduce the tuition fee, but to different extent. Oh, one thing is that I would like to address that. During the lockdown, my university also offered the free lunch. Anyone working uh, in the university will receive the free lunch. All right. Okay, thank you for okay, thank the you. interesting information. All right, uh, another question. This is a question from Shaira, Malaysia. I would like to ask the question on the Thailand government. Okay, Dr. B. Mm -hmm. Initiative in providing training to the unemployed workforce. What mm. kind of training and budget incurred? And do they have the strategic approach for their future manpower needs, demand and supply? Uh, frank, uh, frank speaking, uh, I don't have much knowledge about this. I don't have much information about this. But what I heard from my friends that, okay, for those uh, freelance, uh, if you want to study like, let's say, uh, IoT, or you want to improve yourself, 
you can reduce the kind of uh, training costs. Uh, they they have a they design the training costs differently based on the needs of the let's say uh, labor market because during this time we don't have uh, we don't have work uh, you have you have been jobless but it doesn't mean that you will become jobless forever so it's a time for you to get ready to prepare yourself all right thank you very much dr b so uh this is a question from the chat uh room is there any critical need to reconstruct the current curriculum to address the right combination mm -hmm. of face-to-face -face and online learning i would like to invite uh, madam karija perhaps she has some opinion on this matter I'm sorry, your your mic is mute. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, I'm sorry, once again, help me. Please repeat the question. Because I, uh, I can't saw right. the chat. Uh, question. Okay, the question is, is there any critical need to reconstruct the current curriculum to address the right combination of face-to-face -face and online learning? It is um, a bit out of context, but yeah. Okay. From my humble point of view, yes, of course, nowadays we already have existing uh, programs, good programs, but uh, higher education institutions, I think, uh, should be friendly to uh, business and also entrepreneurs. Um, entrepreneurs as, for example, just in response to the first question, for example, how uh, uh, how new millennials want to join a business. So then we as higher education institution should become um, friendly to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and business out there. For example, we should allow, for example, uh, now, nowadays uh, due to di digitalization and also social media technologies, so a lot of new millennials, maybe they want to join uh, social commerce, for example, they can use social media in order to use e-commerce. Maybe university can avoid trainings, for example, for students, allow the student to get involved in business and not just they involve in business by providing new product on their own because not necessarily that everybody is creative and manage to produce their own product. Maybe they can join existing company as partners and think uh, like entrepreneurs. We are uh, yes, I admit I'm an academician and the way academician think and entrepreneurs think also, uh, all, uh, the way they think is different. So then uh, students and also higher education in institutions must help students, not just uh, once they graduate, they want to become employee, but they must think as if they want to become a business owner and change the mindset as entrepreneurs. Okay, that's one of uh, the response that I can join from my humble opinion. All right, thank you very much, Madam Khadija. Uh, next question uh, from Hanisa Rahmania Haslin, Universitas Ibnu Khaldun Bogor. I would like to ask what the solution for lower skill and agriculture sector because yeah. this sector is affected by COVID. So, uh, moreover, technology has not touched many people in this sector. Any comments? on the solution for lower skill workers and agriculture sector okay here i would like to share um some something okay uh in terms of the agriculture sector uh yes um it's all it has been hit ser uh, seriously but what i learned from the case in china is that okay mm -hmm. right now okay chinese people try to help this sector by buying the food online. They have one term mm -hmm. called live stream sales, okay. live stream sales. So all the governor from different province, different city try to sell their uh, agriculture product, including the vegetable, fruit, whatever, this fresh one. Okay. So they try to, you know, the, the governor or the, the lead, uh, leader of the local community try to uh, bring their product to the internet. Uh, I think um, one thing is that the government uh, will try to improve the internet infrastructure during the, this time. So that, let's say, the remote area, remote uh, village, uh, they can sell their product online. 
and sometimes you know they they can even cooperate with uh, uh, the e-commerce platform, for example, Lazada and shopping. They can make it uh, make the logistic faster and convenient. These are the way also. This is the way that we can help help them as well. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Bing. Um, I believe this is our last question. Can you please share the three important tips for SME business owners during this pandemic from Jazeera Malaysia, Jazeera Afrangan Malaysia? Again, the question is, can you please share three important tips for SME business owners during the pandemic? Any ideas? Dr. John, perhaps? Yeah, uh, I think for the SME, for the SME owners, uh, for the for the for the owner or for the for the what? The owner. Okay, for the owner, uh, three three tips for this COVID situation. I think first first you need to you need to know your customer your customer habit right now because uh, lots of lots of customer now uh, changing habits. You need to know the new habit of your customer and. The, the second, adapt your business. Yes, uh, before before COVID situation, maybe you have a very, very good business. But with this changing situation, you need to adapt, even though you have a, you have a very good record before. You need to adapt what's good for the future. So that's the second. And the and the and the third the third tip is. Do not be afraid to pivot your business if necessary. So after you adapt, you need what what needs to be to be adapt in the next future. What kind of business that you need to expand? What kind of business that you need to forget? Because uh, lots of entrepreneur, as I as I recall, uh, they really really afraid to leave their their business because they already have good traction before but that business actually already sink so we need to brave ourselves to give ourselves a chance to pivot to another industry if it's necessary even for the small business yes all right thank you very much dr dion madam hazwani may i yeah. respond also to the question all right this uh, three uh, some opinion from me so then um, some com all companies as SMEs, um, I did mention that we should focus on problem, but actually we should focus on problem solving. Problem solving in certain, uh, because the problem solving is unique to each industry and also to its business units. Other than that, business uh, owner must be creative. So then some business maybe they involve in non-essential business, which is very bad, uh, the performance during uh, MCOs. So then maybe they can diversify the business plus not uh, essential business in order to reduce risk. Other than that, they must willing to adapt to the new situation, new um, uh, circumstances and also new le learn new skill and adapt to the changes. This is, this is very important. I mean, in a Malaysia, from Malaysian context, we know that government really have, but based on research done by SMEs, only uh, SMEs uh, in partnership with Bismarck Marketing, Sundiyam Berhad, only 26.6% out of all these 100% SMEs will manage to get um, really um, manage to get help from government uh, economic stimulus. And another 70 7.6% have to apply for special relief fund in order to help the company. Meaning that not to say that anything that government have is not important, not focused to the problem, to the SMEs, but the problems of each industry and business units is unique to the business owner itself and also to the industry itself. So then they must be creative in order to solve their problems and adapt to the situation. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so thank you very much. I believe that's all the questions. Uh, that is the end of the Q&A session. Uh, all right, so we hope that the seminar impart some knowledge and exposure to all the participants today. On behalf of the organizer and Mr. Iman, I would like to express my gratitude to all panelists 
It is a privilege to have them today and share with us the perspective from their home countries. A special thank also goes to the host, UPJ, and of course the participants. See you next time. Have a good day, everyone, and stay safe. Uh, and you can refer to the chat room for any information, probably, probably some links, maybe. Yes, the attendant link. All right. Yes, yes. Yes, but Iman, anything you want to okay. say? No, just, just adding one more, one more thing regarding the chat room. Uh, if the old participants would like to have the link for presentations or present for this day, uh, you can have it now. So our committee has it on the chat room now. Okay, that's the one. I hope everyone can see that link. You can either uh, scan it or just go into the link directly. Once more, thank you everyone for your participations in this international seminar. Have a good day and always healthy. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Stay healthy. Okay. Have a great day. Have a great day. Um, to all the panelists, could you leave your contact number or, or, or email address maybe in the chat box? to the panelists or speakers. Can you leave your contact, um, uh, contact uh, maybe your email address on the chat box? Bicarain Mas Wan, Mas Wan Dawan. Aduh, ketemu pasti. Perselingan. Thank you for this one. Hello? 